good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you. Good and wonderful people of the tube of world today. Hope you're grand and all is well in your world. People of the tube, have you ever seen one of these before in your life? I certainly haven't. This amp, which is what this video is all about today, is called a Londoner. L100A. Um, some of you might notice this looks a hell of a lot like the Sound City amps. <coughs> combos that you can get and you'd be right because that's basically what these eventually were branded as but this is an earlier one uh the later ones had the sound city logo on either side i don't i don't remember which side now it was and they kind of changed the core of it a bit but this is the this is what they started out life as this is an early 1970s amp made in east germany so this is before the berlin war well way before the berlin wall well kind of way before the berlin wall came down and um Basically, the idea of this amp was um, to market a British-style amp to the people beyond the wall, basically. Uh, in all fairness, YouTube, there's not a great deal of information out there anywhere about these things. And when I saw it come up for sale on the Facebook Marketplace, I had to have it. It was 50 quid. It's a 100-watt guitar, bass, and organ amp. Um, and it's just insane. It's one of the weirdest, weirdest amps I've ever known. And I'll get into some of the, uh, I'll, I'll talk about some of the things. So, let me just give you a bit of kind of, this is what I found out, people, with you about this particular amp. I don't, there isn't much. What people seem to know about these things can be written on the back of, back of a postage stamp. There isn't a great deal of information. Anyway, so these uh, these were actually uh, a Vermona region made. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing it's some company made in East Germany. Um, they were badged as the Londoner, and they're from 1972 to 1974. They made these things. So basically only a period of like maybe two to three years they made these. Um, apparently, I don't know how true this is, people on YouTube, but apparently the speakers inside here... Um, they were originally developed to use on Soviet tanks. How true that is, I don't know. Because again, the, the information on on this amp is so sketchy. No one actually knows. You know, it, it's, a, it's a bit kind of like, you know, is it, isn't it? Who knows? It's a bit of a weird one. Anyway, looking at the speaker cones and the way the speakers are, I can kind of believe this though. Because they are unlike any other speaker I've ever seen. I'll, 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 get, a, I'll get a bit of footage uh, for you and I'll overlay it on this bit quickly. Because the actual casters on the speakers are extraordinarily well made. They, 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 they are so... They're tough. You know, they are not, they're not about to break anytime soon. I think you could drop these speakers off the Empire State Building and they'd hit the floor and do more damage to the floor. Uh, they're absolutely rock solid, as is the amp, to be honest with you. The amp's built like an absolute tank, you know, no pun intended. But again, I do love the idea that if that is true, that these speakers were developed for Soviet tanks, I love how they're in a guitar amp, guitar bass and organ amplifier. It would make sense though. I mean, if you think you've got a guitar amp, well, an amp, sorry, should I say, that needs to handle guitar, bass frequencies and organ frequencies, it kind of makes sense that they need to be really solid speakers. So military grade speakers would make sense. So uh, let's move on. So yeah, so 1972-74, maybe Soviet tank speakers, not actually sure. Uh, it, they were modelled kind of apparently on a Carlsbro Stingray. Uh, I'm guessing you couldn't get certain amps over in East Germany at, at the time I made these. Again, I don't really know the history of people. Here. I'm not that. Uh, I'm not that up on the history of what was going on at that period of time. Um, so I was a bit sure, but I'm guessing you couldn't get stuff like that sent over. So this was made by a, uh, an East German company um, to kind of obviously fa to facilitate guitarists, bass players, and, and organ players. I just love the fact it says organ and bass. It's so cool. We'll talk a bit more about the the front panel in a sec. So uh, and yeah, they're aimed at the Eastern European market as a cheap alternative to popular British amps of the 70s. So I'm guessing. Kind of like, you know, these are kind of like, if you can't afford to get a Carlsbro or whatever, this is where you would go. Um, and hence why they adopted the Londoner name, because they were trying to go after that kind of like, you know, 
more more British kind of you know the Carlsbro thing being British. Okay, so uh, what else was say? So um, yeah, late seventies they rebranded these things as Sound City, and apparently they're not as good. Uh, they're not as hardy and not as robust as these ones were. Uh, again, how true that is, I don't know. Um, but these things are insane. So it's a two twelve amp. You got two twelve inch speakers. Like I say, it's technically a two channel, two channel amp. Uh, you got a okay, well. Let's let's go through the front panel. So you got two inputs, bright and normal. Bright is basically pointless because there's no volume. I'll show you that when we get to doing sound examples. Uh, then you've got your uh, EQ section here on the lead slash rhythm channel. So you've got volume, bass, treble, middle. And then you've got a parametric EQ section, which is crazy. Um, and then you've got a reverb dial here, which I'm guessing at some point, you know, you, you, it, I'm guessing it came with a foot switch where you could turn the reverb off and on. The reverb in this amp is bizarre. In the intro jam, the reverb you heard was just the amp. It's a really, really strange sounding reverb. It's a really strange sounding amp, to be honest with you, PWG. It's not... I don't know really how to describe it. It's very odd. Anyway, so that's the guitar, well, the lead and rhythm channel. So moving over to the bass and organ channel, it's a lot simpler. Uh, you've got a bright and normal channel uh, inputs again, uh, and you've got a volume, bass, and treble. Sadly, I'm missing the dial for the bass control, which is a bit sad. But I'm going to plug a bass in later on. I'll let you hear me play bass through it with my amazing bass skills. And then on here, over here, you've got like your master section. So you've got a master volume, and you've got a global presence dial as well that goes over everything. So uh, here's what it is: on/off switch. Uh, that's about it. In the back, there is a there is an out to slave it, so you can use it as a slave amp or slave an amp into this. Uh, it's a hundred watts. It's louder than all hell. It's not. It doesn't distort until it's basically wound up to the teeth, which I won't be doing today, people with you, because simply, it's not very nice. Uh, it's louder than all hell. When this thing is, oh, I might do it. I don't know. We'll 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 see where we go in a bit. If I'm feeling brave, I'll crank it to the teeth and we'll see. It do Once it gets to everything on 10, it breaks up. But it's extraordinarily clean most of the way. The headroom on this amp is outrageous. It just keeps going and going and going. It's crazy. Anyway, these things are ridiculous. I also thought this grill cloth was metal. When I first saw the amp, I thought it was a metal grill cloth because it's like silvery metallic. And I thought, oh, it's got a, well, like a weird metal grill cloth. It looks like a Roland cube or something. And it isn't, it's actually fabric, but um, it just looks strange. I mean, the whole amp itself looks odd. You know, you've got these two handles left and right on the top there, and it's it's just really odd. And again, they only made these things like three years, 72 to 74, and it's just really odd. And again, there's not much information about these things. People, too, if you have any information on the Londoner L100A, let us know in the comment section below, because I'd love to learn more than what I know already on this thing be very interesting to know but it's a really cool amp it really is i love it i definitely love it for its weirdness you know it's it's not a fender it's not a marshall it's not anything it's itself it's it's a really odd thing like i say with these speakers are bizarre as well but the, the, the frequencies that they kick out are just odd they really are strange anyway boo juice that's enough waffle so what we're gonna do now there's not many tones to show on this thing there's basically I'll show you my pedal board in isolation so you can just hear it just as is. Then what we'll do is we'll unplug the pedal board. I'll plug straight into it, show you how clean it is. Then I'll plug a bass in. And then uh, if I'm feeling brave, we'll crank it. But I've, I've got to be feeling brave with this because it's not the nicest of sounds. And it, it tends to be a bit, I'm going to rip your face off and, you know, do horrible things to it. It's a bit grim. Anyway, um... Yeah, and also the inside, it, it's just so sparse. There's nothing in this thing. The chassis is actually hollow as well. It's just like a square, nothing in the middle, and all the components are mounted to this front part and a couple on the back. That's it. There's no actual kind of bottom or top to the chassis. It's really strange. Uh, again, it's a cheap amp. It was, it's a cost-cutting amp, so it, it is what it is. But it's a really strange thing. And again, these were later branded Sound City, uh, and apparently that was a big no-no, because uh, I don't think they actually were anything to do with Sound City. 
But apparently they're not as good, according to some people who say they, they have these. And a lot of people say these things are kind of like live forever. And I'm, you know, I, this thing's seen the war. It's it's not it's not a museum piece. Let's put it that way. It's got it's got bits of Tolex missing. Uh, the top is actually bowed. This is like that. It, it's you can't. I don't think you'll be able to see it on camera view too. But the top is actually really bowed in there, and it actually makes it really hard to get the chassis out. When you want to get the chassis out, you have to actually lift up the top to get the chassis out. It's a two-person job, not a one-person job. The speakers are insane though, and this thing weighs more than a tank. You know, it really is. It's 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 a weird thing. It's such a weird oddity, and I had to have it because of that thing. When I first saw it and started doing research into it and I was like I've got to have this thing I've got to have it um yeah it's just odd and there's a random sticker of Santa with a boom box on it why not anyway um without further ado people tube let me show you my pedal board through it and um and we'll go from there it, they're gonna say there's not there's not much really to show on this amp isn't it it's, it's not really kind of like you know loaded with features I'd say so I'll show you like, show you how it takes pedals I'll show you it clean I'll show you it with a bass and then I'll show you it wound up to the teeth, which uh, I've kind of shot myself in the foot because I'm going to have to do that now. I'll, otherwise, you'll never let never let me go. Um, so yeah, and then that'll be it, really. Uh, I'll get my earplugs for that bit though, or maybe just stand outside the room and do it. I don't know. Anyway, without further ado, I feel sorry for my SM57 and anything that has to be in here though, because it is. It's not a bad sound, Buju, but it's harsh because it's so loud. It's so loud. Anyway. Without further ado, let's get the um, let's get the talk eye back in. Pedal board's still plugged in, and let's just uh, let me let me show you this kind of thing how it takes pedals. Because again, and I'll show you the parametric because it is really weird. The parametrics really change, and also the reverb, which I'll turn all the way off to start with, and I'll show you that as a first kind of thing of a clean tone, well, cleanish tone with the reverb. So let's go. Let's make some noise. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi, Gabe, who are you? As hope, well, hopefully you can hear, this thing is weird. Especially that, that reverb responds really odd. I like it. It's like it's, it's, it's just it's, its own thing. It's so weird. The parametric EQ is mental as well. People of the tube, tell me what you're thinking, please. Tell me what you're thinking, because it is weird. But I love it. How can you not love it? How I mean, honestly, how could you not love it? Okay, so so that's what we're gonna do. That, that's all it is for the pedals. It, it takes pedals like nobody's biz. It's amazing. Is it weird? Yeah, definitely weird. But it's very easy to dial in the sound you want, especially with the parametric EQ. If you keep the depth kind of flat out, uh, and then you can mess around with the frequency dial, you can really kind of dial in where you want. Anyway, we're gonna move on now. We're gonna unplug the pedal board and just go straight in. I'll just show you this thing clean, because like I say, this amp is clean as a whistle, pretty much all the way to the top. You have to really kind of have both volumes, channel volume and master volume on 10 to get any kind of break up. Or, or, you know, if you put it all both to nine, or you say you put this volume to 10 and that one to nine, it's still gonna be clean. It's really odd. It's really, it's literally everything has to be on 10 volume wise, otherwise you're not gonna get any gain out of this thing. But anyway, so what we're gonna do now I'm also going to change the thing on the camera because I've just realised it's very, very dark and I keep blinding you with the guitar and it's making it darker. I do apologise, people, tube. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug the pedal board and go straight in. Uh, just to let you know quickly how I had it set up for the pedal board, though. So, on the lead and rhythm channel, I had volume on five. Um, so, basically, well, it's five on the dial. So, there isn't really a straight up. There's a line down here, but... 10 is when 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 the amps turn to zero sorry 12 o'clock is zero not this this is this is like this technically means that line would mean that the amps on six and it's on zero it's really odd it's really backwards um so i have oh wrong wrong one day uh so i have a channel volume on five so basically from the line <laughs> under the u is five uh no bass because uh, this amp's got a lot of that, and it, you don't need to turn the bass dial on, it just becomes a mess. Um, treble, I've got on four. Uh, mids, I've got on ten, all the way up. Frequency and depth on the parametric EQ are all on ten as well, so they're both on ten. And the reverb was just kind of wherever. In the intro jam, I had it on ten. Uh, when I was messing around, I had it on three, then six, and then ten. It's, it, but it's it's got its own it's got its own mind. It really has. And the master section, I had the volume at about five and a half, which is where this amp starts to wake up. There's not much in this amp up till about five, uh, volume wise. Once you get it over five, this thing just goes from "I'm not very loud" to "I'm going to destroy the world." It just gets really deafening. And then I had the presence at four. So uh, that's not four o'clock either, it's just four on the dial. So that's how I had to set up a pedal board. I don't know how I'm going to set up for clean, we'll, we'll see in a minute. So, without further ado, let's turn it all the way off, uh, unplug this. And let's go straight in, shall we? Let's, uh, let, me, let me show you this. Uh... I'm a bit of a loss for words, to be honest with you, I really am at a loss for words. I'll show you the Bright Channel as well, but it doesn't really do anything. But... It's just bizarre. Anyway, back in a sec.
I'll go boot you. That's 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 the clean tone. You know, it's a really sparkly, clean, bright tone. It's quite brash in some ways, but it's still really cool. The reverb in this thing is just so much fun when it's on ten, because the amp starts to kind of do weird things. It starts to almost kind of fight you back. I've just realised I didn't show the bright channel. In all fairness, boot you, you're not missing anything there. All it does is ruin the sound of the amp. So uh, I'm quite happy not to show that. But um, but that reverb is just bizarre. It's like, I've never played a reverb tank quite like it. And it's massive as well, for YouTube. You'll, you'll, you'll have seen that at the beginning in the, uh, the shot I showed you of the speakers and stuff. It's a massive tank. And it's just odd. It's just odd. It's just weird. And I love it so much because of that. It's not... It's, it's just, I don't know. I really don't, I'm a loss for words. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is embarrass myself. Um, so bass players of the world, feel free to laugh at me. I'm going to get a bass and show you it with a bass guitar into the uh, the bass and organ channel. Uh, this uh, this channel has no reverb or anything like that. It still has the global presence dial wired to it, but it just has volume, bass and treble. So there's no reverb on this one. It's just a straight clean. Just to let you know how I had that set up as well for, the, uh, for what you just heard. I had volume, channel volume on 8, no bass yet again, no treble this time because didn't need it. Uh, mids uh, all the way up on 10, the parametric thing was all up on 10, so frequency and depth were on 10. Reverb I was messing around with. Also the presence I had on 4 at one point turned it all the way off. I think I did treble at 4 as well at one point and turned it all the way off, I forget. But either way, that's how I had it set up. So I'm going to get a bass now and um, let the laughter commence. Honestly, just call me Jacko Pistorius the second, really. I mean, uh, you know, master bass player. Anyway, <laughs> that's the bass channel. It can kind of, it kind of goes from kind of like nice and warm to extremely pokey very fast. Uh, I basically had the volume all the way up. I had the bass at about two. It, it gets really boomy very fast this time. There's a lot of bass in this. 
And I had a treble on zero, and then I turned it up to four for the uh, attempted slap bass bit. But it's a cool bass amp. You know, it sounds cool. It's, it's definitely different. It doesn't sound like, you know, your regular bass amp. I, I don't feel. Anyway, it's, it's very strange. Anyway, Boo Chew, the time has come. Let's put an end to the world, shall we? Let's just turn this thing all the way up and see what it sounds like. Shall we? Shall we do that? I think we shall. I'm going to get my earplugs. I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. That reverb tank's still going. That was so loud. Again, I had earplugs in people tube. I'm not. I, I was not about to be anywhere near this thing. Um, without earplugs at that point in time, that was loud as all hell. Anyway. That's it for this video, Poo with you. I'm going to call it a day there. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Uh, if you like the videos I do on this channel, like what I do, please consider becoming a patron at Patreon. Links to that are down there, uh, as well as links to my Bandcamp where you can listen to me music. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say, Poo with you, about this thing. I'm so happy I have it. It's a weirdo, and I love it. Is it a Marshall? No. Is it a Fender? No. Is it a named? Is it a no name? Is it a name brand? Not really, no. It's something totally weird. But what, what, what do you think it sounds like, Pooh Tube? Because to me, it sounds like a weird cross between like a Vox AC30 and a Fender. Uh, mixed in with kind of like roll and jazz chorus. And I don't know what else. It's just weird. It's just weird. And I love it to bits. The Londoner, everybody. L100A. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner. Can you get copyright claim for that? Probably because everyone... We'll get ruined on that. Anyway, I should have I'm going to lose my mind. Um, so yeah, anyway, let me know what you thought, people with the tube. Uh, I don't know how well that sound came across. I feel so sorry for my SM57. Um, yeah. See you again. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. Goodbye now. This has been fun. This has been good fun.